Today we will analyze the rarest Honda engines of all. Initially, Honda began manufacturing engine rings for Toyota, but over time, it became its main competitor. We will see motorcycle and car engines. Starting with Honda's first invention in 1946, the chimney engine. This engine is two-stroke and gets its name from the piston and cylinder head tubes. Basically, the duct, called a chimney, fulfills the function of a lateral transfer. When the piston goes up, the chimney closes and allows gases to enter the crankcase, creating a vacuum. When the piston goes down, the transfer holes are uncovered and gases flow from the crankcase to the cylinder. This gives the engine an excellent removal of burned gases. This is called uniflow scavenging. I clarify that the piston is open at the bottom. This allows the passage of gases. The advantages of this engine are greater precision in the opening and closing timing compared to a conventional two-stroke engine, providing better fuel consumption and more power. The chimney also serves as a guide, reducing piston pitch. However, the extra weight somewhat limits the number of revolutions. The lubrication of the chimney was very difficult since there is no flow of gases in this sector, and the fuel mixture does not arrive well. Honda, in 1946, which is after the Second World War, he couldn't find machines to work with the degree of tolerances that this engine required, so he couldn't build more than a few prototypes that were inefficient. There were also no anti-friction materials to cover the chimney. In 1996, Honda's research and development department rebuilt the engine using modern machinery with good results. Basically, this engine was way ahead of its time due to the construction issue and also way behind today due to anti-pollution regulations because, as you may know, two-stroke engines burn oil. Honda's first Formula One The competition used V8 engines mounted longitudinally and with rear power output where the gearbox was. A conventional way, but Honda said that things had to be done differently. With his experience in motorcycles, he joined two six-cylinder engines at 60 degrees, obtaining a V12. Although the engine was heavier since it had more parts, having smaller and lighter pistons, the engine could rev at 14,000 RPM, generating 230 horsepower. This 1.5-liter engine with 12 carburetors had the power output through the center. The engine was positioned transversely with the gearbox also centered. This made the weight distribution of the vehicle perfectly balanced. Steering was excellent. The first Grand Prix that this car won was in Mexico, precisely because of the height at which the track was located, since one of the engineers who worked on this engine was the same one who tuned the famous World War II fighter, the Mitsubishi Zero. Honda 166 or 250-6 this little engine was only 250 cubic centimeters. Honda had an obsession with designing a four-stroke engine that was just as powerful as a two-stroke. That is why he built it with six cylinders, making it rotate at 18,000 RPM and achieving 60 horsepower. This gives a ratio of 240 horsepower per liter of engine, something that today is still difficult to overcome even using turbos. This twin overhead cam 24-valve engine could outrace two strokes of the same displacement. The gear that goes up through the center makes the camshaft lighter since the efforts are divided in each half. Today, almost all large displacement motorcycles use central timing. Six 22mm carburetors were in charge of feeding each cylinder. The Conrad piston assembly is so small that it fits in the hand. Cooling was only by air and an oil radiator. In the same year, Honda also had the RC116, a two-cylinder, 50 cubic centimeter engine, also four strokes. Because the engine was so small, its exhaust valves were 0.4 inches in diameter and weighed 6 grams each. The piston was 1.3 inches in diameter, which is the size of a bottle cap. With this, it generated 16 horses at 21,500 RPM. Mounted on this motorcycle with its 9-speed transmission could exceed 100 miles per hour. In the 70s, Honda tried to make a Wankel engine, the A16CR. 
The chamber had a capacity of 125 cubic centimeters and a compression ratio of 8.5 to 1, giving 13.5 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Honda was not satisfied with the results and the engine never left prototype stage. Moving on now to the next engine, the oval piston engine. This engine was also born in the 1970s. The Motorcycle World Championship was now being led by two-stroke engines. Although these are less efficient than a four-stroke in terms of fuel consumption, the reality is that they're lighter, have fewer parts such as camshafts and valves, and since ignition is performed for each rotation of the crankshaft, while a four-stroke it does it every two rotations, it makes the two-stroke engine up to 50% more powerful at the same engine size. The championship regulations only limited the displacement to 500cc and four cylinders. Honda had two-stroke motorcycles, but as a lover of four-strokes, he decided to fight back with a new weapon. In order to outperform the two-stroke, he would have to make the engine spin two times faster. Getting enough air into the cylinder in such a short time means you need twice as many valves, too. Not having enough space for valves, one would use a V8, but the regulation indicated four cylinders. Honda decided to move the pistons closer by taking advantage of the wrist pin movement. The result was this oval piston engine, eight valves per cylinder and two connecting rods, practically a V8, but no, a true V4. Honda's secret weapon was the use of magnesium and titanium, managing to build a lighter engine than a two-stroke. However, before he could get any juice out of this, the competition soon discovered that they could use these metals in their two-stroke engines, again being up to 20 kilos lighter than the new Honda engine. Not everything was smooth with this engine. The rings did not have the same pressure in the center as in the corners, and distortion problems appeared in the two twin rods. Some brakes left the bike out of the races, and with less power than two strokes, winning races was very difficult. A limited edition of 232 oval piston motorcycles was manufactured for the public, the NR750. The engine was slightly larger and had lower RPM to make it more reliable, although 15,000 is nothing despicable. 120 horsepower of 750 cubic centimeters is more than good to reach 200 miles per hour. Its value today for a motorcycle in good condition exceeds $100,000. But tell me, where else are you going to find a motorcycle with oval pistons? In 1982, the oval piston engine had achieved 95% of its development for racing, but Honda decided to abandon the project, since its NS500 two-stroke motorcycle and V3 engine was giving good results. Continuing using the oval engine in racing was a very high risk. Honda had no choice but to accept that two strokes were better for racing and developed the V4 NSR 500. Despite not liking them, he would prove to be the undisputed leader in two strokes. Many used the V4 engine of 70 degrees and double crankshafts linked by a gear like the Suzuki RGV 500. Both crankshafts rotated forward or the Yamaha YRZ500 that rotated in the opposite direction, counteracting the gyroscope effect. Also, the engine was more compact and made the bike more aerodynamic, although this setup used eight bearings to hold each 13-pound crankshaft for a total of 26 pounds. The NSR500 broke with that and used a single 17-pound crankshaft with its cylinders set to 112 degrees, obtaining less friction since it only had five bearings versus eight of the others. On the straights, this bike was impossible to catch. Initially, the NSR500 fired its spark evenly spaced in each cylinder like any engine. This technique is called screamer because of the even sound it produces. But with the excessive power it produced, this made the bike indomitable, and it tended to lose control in curves since the tire was subjected to constant power and did not have a brake where it could regain traction. Once the slip started, nothing could be done and the rider would end up on the ground. In 1991, Honda appeared with the so-called Big Bang technique. This technique reduces engine power by 1%, but gives the bike much better traction and more engine braking, ideal for lowering and assisting the brakes. Also, let's remember that Honda had the most powerful engine, so this loss didn't mean much. The first spark is fired in two cylinders simultaneously. 70 degrees later, the second sparks are fired. Then there's a long interval of 290 degrees where nothing happens. Then the tire regains traction and the spark is fired again, followed by 70 degrees again to return to the tire recovery interval. Oddly enough, this made the super-powerful Honda have better traction and allow more acceleration while cornering, 
sending more horsepower to the ground and resulting in a faster bike. The sound of the engine changed to a hoarser one, hence its name Big Bang. The competition noticed this. Later, using special microphones and computers, the secret of Honda and the new firing order was deciphered. The NSR 500 produced 170 horsepower at 13,000 RPM. Years later, the use of leaded fuel was prohibited and everyone returned to the Screamer engines, since the power had been reduced by more than 15 horsepower and the motorcycle was easier to handle again. In 2002, it was allowed in the regulations that four-stroke engines could have double displacement in order to compete with two-strokes. While everyone used conventional four-cylinder engines, Honda came up with an unexpected V5 engine of almost one liter displacement with three cylinders in front and two in the back. The engine is in V at 75.5 degrees of inclination. The outer cylinders share crank pin journals. The front center piston runs alone. This configuration gives it little vibration when turning at 14,000 RPM and thus generating 210 horsepower. Honda managed to win the championship two consecutive times. The latest version of this engine came out in 2006 with shorter pistons and various improvements, giving it 260 horsepower at 16,000 RPM. In 1989, Honda launched the world's most powerful 1.6 engine with the VTEC system, a system that varies valve timing, something used by everyone today, but with a different name and in a somewhat more precarious way. The VTEC system combines the advantages of a soft and a racing cam, giving it a smooth ride and low consumption at low revs and a powerful one at high. This engine delivered 160 horsepower, while the 1.6 engines of that time barely reached 80. At 4,800 RPM, the VTEC system kicks in and begins to deliver its violence up to 8,200 RPM, a very high rev limit just the way Honda likes it. The Super Square Stroke 4-cylinder B-Series engine had a 10.2 to 1 compression ratio. It would take decades for this compression ratio to become conventional. You might be thinking that this engine is not rare today, we all know the VTEC, but in 1989, it was a complete novelty. Honda has proven to be a leading company in the manufacture of motorcycle engines, cars, boats, portable machines, etc. And he's even dabbling in airplane engines like the General Electric Honda HF120 and his own compact plane, with improvements like less noise and better fuel consumption. As we've seen so far, Honda was not guided by anything conventional. He did not respect the ignition order, engine angle, or anything. Up to two connecting rods per cylinder, he was a true engine developer. The motto of the power of dreams is because if you can imagine it, then you can find a way to carry it out and even be better than the competition. Comment your experience with Honda engines down below and be sure to share this video with your friends. We'll see you next time.